What is the origins of your pain? Where does your pain come from? Now, I'm not talking about physical pain. Even though physical pain in the form of big T trauma, shock and awe trauma, can lead to long-lasting emotional and psychological pain, which is what I'm actually asking. The kind of pain I'm talking about is the pain that keeps us stuck. The pain that keeps us trapped. The pain that we carry with us every single day. That prevents us from actually being fully conscious, fully aware, fully present. And just quite simple, happy. The pain that makes us believe that this is the end. Nothing will ever change. This hardship I'm going through, this is going to be the rest of my life. The pain that makes us give up hope. The pain that stops hope from ever developing. Where does that pain come from? Hmm. These are not questions for the faint-hearted. This is not a topic that somebody who has never experienced this kind of pain will ever have a reason to think about. The truth is much more aligned with I only think about this when I hurt. And why do I think about this? I think about this because I hurt. Because I want to make this pain go away. Hi, my name is Marcel. During the course of the next couple of weeks, I will be recording videos nearly every day about this very particular topic. Pain and where it comes from. In this video, I would like to give you a very quick overview understanding of the four main areas in every single person's life that if these areas are not fulfilled and developed, they will automatically cause us pain. Now, this comes from Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's a bit changed and adapted based on personal experience with my clients over the years. But I cannot take credit for this because it does come from Abraham Maslow. Number one, everybody has a need for safety and security. Goes for itself. If this need is not met, well, you don't have space to think about anything else. Have you ever tried to think on the side with an empty stomach and on the side with a full stomach? Do yourself a favor as an experiment. And try that. See what the difference is. When you have an empty stomach, most of your energy will actually go, goes, not goes, most of your energy will actually go towards fixing that problem, right? Fixing that pain. That pain is, I'm hungry, I have an empty stomach. I want food. I'm not going to think about five years from now where I want to be in my life and my professional development. No. Can I think about now, right? So this is the beautiful thing about pain, which I will talk about. But just as a quick side note, pain brings us into the present and it shows us what we need to focus on right now. Number one, everybody needs safety and security. Because if you don't have safety and security, you can't think about something else. It's very difficult. Number two, belonging. Everybody has an inside innate need to belong. If we don't belong, then we think, well, we don't fit in. Okay, and if we don't fit in, then we're not accepted. And if we're not accepted, then we don't have a place. And if we don't have a place, then we're not safe. And then we go back into the safety and security loop. 
right? Our whole system tells us that we need to belong to something in order to fit in. Now, this is a very, very loaded question. But does one have to belong in order to fit in? And if one does have to belong, to what does one have to belong? I would like you to actually think about that because this is something that I come across majority of the cases with all of my clients. This is the single thing that is responsible for the most pain I see. It was in my own life as well. Number three, self-expression. Now, if we're not able to express ourselves clearly, the self-definition that we have of ourselves will never be articulated or presented to the world around us. Which means what? Carl Jung said it best. He said, if I don't have a strong enough definition of myself, the world will tell me who I am. Okay? Come on, that speaks for itself. I don't know myself well enough. I will be susceptible for influence for people around me, people around me's opinions of me, who I am. Okay, this ties in once again with belonging and self-expression. Self-expression. How well do you express yourself? Are you currently in a relationship where you feel you cannot express yourself, where you feel you have to walk on eggshells, where you feel you try, you constantly have to try and be someone that you actually might not be in order to please somebody else. Is this your life? Think about self-expression. How well do you express yourself? And then the last one, which is my favorite, right? If and once such insecurity has been met and belonging has been met and self-expression has been met, our fourth and automatic beautiful need becomes social philanthropy. Because once we've ticked these boxes, one, two, and three, then we automatically have developed so much that we realize everything is connected. And then we want to make things around us better, instinctively. So this is a very short introduction into what I will be talking about over the next series of videos. If you have any questions, please reach out to me privately. Um, my contact details are available. On this page, um, you can go to my Facebook, my LinkedIn account. You can go to the website, changesolutions.eu. If this is something you're struggling with personally, reach out to me, okay? If you don't want to reach out to me, just comment, like it. I haven't made videos for a while because I've been going through a difficult COVID-related situation, which I will also tell you about later on. So I'm trying to pick up traction again in order to get some of the content that I'm working on at the moment out to you guys again. Everything that I will be talking about are things that I work with on a daily basis with my clients. Before I helped people to help themselves, I went through all of these things myself. So these are things from personal experience. Okay, guys, that's me. Look after yourselves. Take care. Bye-bye.